Hello community, you've probably heard about ChatGPT's new task feature, which is currently in beta. It lets you schedule automated prompts and notifications, like daily reminders or recurring tasks. In this video, I will show you how we can replicate a similar idea using our own scripts and a Langgraph agent. So, but what's actually going on there? ChatGPT identifies a script or command to run and sets up a cron job for you. A cron job is a task that runs regular or at a given time. So at a high level, we have to do the following. We have to parse the user's natural language for time and date. We then have to identify a given script or command to run. So this is of course limited, we cannot do everything. We then have to schedule the script automatically. So let's dive in and explore how this works with Langgraph. Okay, so that's the repository and you can get the link to this code in the description. So first of all, this is more a proof of concept. If you want something bigger, then please let me know that in the comments. If this video gets enough attention, then I can provide a follow-up video with a more complex agent. So as you can see, here we've got our code IPython notebook. This is where we set up our agent. And there is another folder called scripts. And here we've got some batch scripts, like an alert script, a notify script, and a report script. So this is only some dummy functionality, but we use that scripts to actually set up our uh, scheduled tasks here on Windows. So if you are using a Mac or Linux computer, so this will not directly work, you would have to translate that to a Linux terminal. So the first step I'm gonna do is I load the OpenAI API key since I use OpenAI to create this agent. Then we load some classes like chat OpenAI, we also use StateGraph and some other classes here from Langgraph. Next step is to create the state object for our agent. So we use messages to create a human message and also save a dummy AI message. And here are the important parts actually. So we want to extract the time from the human message. We also want to identify the script name that we can use to fulfill the user's request. And of course, we can also pass some arguments to that script. Based on the extracted time, the script name and the script arguments, we can then combine that to create a command that we want to execute in a sub process. So at the end, we also gonna store the result. So actually that's quite simple. We're then gonna create a chat OpenAI instance. I'm gonna use the GPT-40 mini model to make that work. And now we're gonna create some structured output. This makes it very easy to actually save output from the LLM in a, yeah, like the name suggests, in a structured way where you can just access attributes like the script name and the script arguments. This class is used a little bit later here in combination with this with structured output function. And this way we can extract the result just by the attribute name of that class. So this is why we're gonna do that. So next functionality here is to actually take in some date time. So I have to clean up that timestamp to properly schedule uh, tasks on a German local Windows system. For you, this might not be necessary. So if you want to try out that code, check out if that actually works or not. You can see at the end of the graph, the complete command, just copy it and paste it here in your command line and see if that actually creates a new task or not. So let's execute that line of code. And next function is the function used in the time extractor node. So what we're gonna do is that we create a new template which gets past the current time. So of course, when we want to say a scheduler task in like 10 minutes, then we of course have to know how late it is currently. And now we want the LLM to do the following. So you are a time extractor who knows the current time in Berlin. So that's the current time in Berlin. If you are at a different location, of course, then you would have to change it. So that's actually not so easy to do that dynamically. Then we want that the LLM reads the user's input for date time mentions, so like tomorrow in uh, two minutes, and it should in, uh, attempt to interpret the time with respect to the current time zone. It should return the exact time date in a short and standardized form. If that doesn't work at the end, then it should answer no time found. Then we're gonna use the LangChain expression language to pass the prompt to the LLM, and then we're gonna use the invoke method where we pass the text and we're gonna save the extracted time in the state object. At the end, we're just gonna return the state. So if you know the basics of Langgraph, then you should already know that workflow. Save it to the state, return the full state. That's what happens in a node. So next function is the script parser. So this time the LLM should do the following. We've got three scripts available, the alert script, the notify script, and the report script. 
We want the LLM to know that you can parse any arguments the user might mention, like with both or something else. We have to identify the script name. It must be one of alert script, notify script or report script. So the LLM decides which script to use. Then we also have to define or find the script arguments, which is a list of strings. This is where we're gonna use the structured output. Again, we're gonna pass that prompt to the LLM and save the output. Here we access the script name attribute, save that here in the state, and also the script arguments where we also save this in a state. At the end, we again return the full state. So the next lines of code are responsible for getting the current working directory. So of course, I cannot uh, set this static because your uh, folder where you clone this repository might look different. So we have to get the working directory dynamically. So we get the current working directory and add the scripts folder. So this is where we've got our scripts. So let's execute that. Okay, so the next step is that we actually create our final command. So to do that, we need the extracted time, we need a script name, and we need the script arguments. So as you can see, this time there is no LLM involved. We could potentially also let an LLM create that to make that more dynamic. But I think in this POC, this is totally fine. So this is how we create our final command. So we use this to create our task. Here is a unique task name because we want to set the script name and the timestamp as a unique name because we cannot set the script name with the same name multiple times. Then we set when it should run and also what should be executed. This is how we create our final command and we save that in the state object. At the end, of course, we're gonna return the full updated state. So after creating the final command, we then can execute that command. To execute commands from Python, you can use the subprocess module and we're gonna use the run method of that where we pass the command. So this will run the command on our machine and at the end we can just create a dummy iMessage and return that from the state. So that's how we create our command and how we can execute our command directly here via an agent. The next step is that we create our agent by creating a workflow with our state object and creating nodes and edges. So I'm just gonna run that and gonna show you that here in this little graphic. I think that's easier to explain what's going on. We first want to extract the time. So when do we want to schedule the task? We also want to extract what script with what arguments we want to use. And we combine that here um, to create a final command. So this is done in the Windows CronTab translator. And, that, and then at the end, we're gonna run the CronTab command. So that's actually it. It's actually quite simple. So let's now try it out. We've got the following user input. Hey, please run the alert in two minutes from now. So we don't have any alert text, but we have to identify that first we want to run the alert script and that we want to run it two minutes from now. So this means that it's not tomorrow at eight o'clock. So we have to identify what time it is and then add two minutes on that. So let's try it out. So I'm just gonna run that script. So currently, this is the current time. And now we can see that this is the command that was created at the end. And if I have a look at my task manager, so here it is, then we can see we've got this alert script. Here, this was scheduled right now. So in two minutes, this should execute. Okay, I just waited two minutes. We can clearly see in the terminal that the alert script was running and I can see this pop-up with the alert that your uh, scheduled alert has fired. So this works. And like I said, this is a POC. If you liked that approach and want to see a more complex video, let me know that in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.